Look at this. Look at this. Oh! Welcome back everyone. We were last seen in Andasibe National Park where we made our way through Maromiza Forest, a magical hike, an exceptional excursion, finding everything from chameleons, Europlatus geckos, and the enchanting Indri Indri or Babakoto. In today's video, join us for our second night herping excursion. At dawn, we'll search for one of the largest localities of Parsons Chameleon on the island and stumble upon several other unique species before closing the day by learning about an amazing initiative whose aim is to save the golden mantella from becoming extinct. Welcome to night two in Andasi Bay. We're starting it off strong with this beautiful Coloma Parsoni Christopher. These guys are a subspecies of the Parsons chameleon. This year is an adult, but we're not gonna spend too much time with her. We're gonna let her sleep and go searching. Have you ever seen anything like this? Have a closer look. That's right. This Coloma Parsoni Christopher has become host to a mosquito that is feeding off of her blood. We kind of wanted to swat it off, but that would be interfering. The richness and biodiversity in Andasibe is something else. Within minutes, we were finding some of the most bizarre and unique looking invertebrates, reptiles, and amphibians you've ever seen. Let's do this together. Okay. You bring the branch down. I grab a lizard. Come on, buddy. Yeah. You know what? Why don't you just crawl on my hand like that? There we go. That's the easy way to bring them down. Look at that. Okay, so here's the female sequoia, and she's probably gonna bite me again. I can just tell. Uh, we had our guide kindly find us this animal just in the tree above us here. And, oh, see? Ooh, 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 ooh. You can see the black buccal membrane in the mouth. It tells us it's a sequoia, not a sameti. If she bites me, it's okay. Oh. <laughs> Dang. He, he, so when I was filming my video with her, she, she wasn't doing this. Yeah, it's because she wants to give me a kiss, babe. Let's see what happens. See? Look. Oh, well, all right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice to actually be able to show you all an adult sized sequoia because most of the ones we've seen so far are juvenile. Uh, this animal is actually an adult. We did find that other one earlier together that right. was tailless or regrowing its tail. So there you go, you can kind of get the full scope of their size. And you can really see, you know, some leaf tailed geckos have really big, elaborate, leafy tails. Yes. And these moss mimics don't. They kind of have a nice flat tail, but smaller than, you know, others in this genus. But what gets me is that coloration, those mm -hmm. greens and those browns, those tans, those oranges coming out. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just a perfect moss mimic lizard. Yeah, absolutely. She's gorgeous. All right. Sweet.
The Madagascar expedition is brought to you by Exoterra. Make your reptiles feel at home. Whether it's beautifully designed terrariums for housing your animals, feeding and nutrition, products that nourish your pets and help them find their food easier, substrates and habitat decor that allow you to create the most beautiful naturalistic looking homes for your animals, heating, lighting, and more. Exoterra has a wide selection of innovative products that allow hobbyists to successfully keep their reptiles. Exoterra makes it possible to cater to almost any species from almost any specialized habitat. Thank you again to my friends at Exoterra for sponsoring the expedition of a lifetime. There is something quite special about standing in a lush Malagasy rainforest surrounded by unique plants and animals. Many of these species were likely once widespread across the island, but are now limited to fragmented, isolated sections of protected land. I found myself hiking through the forest, entranced by the calls of frogs and insects, asking myself, will anyone hear those calls 50 years from now? Will tomorrow's youth get to stand in the same shade provided under the same tree I did that day? This really had me thinking about the important call to action that must be made. If we are to save what remains of these beautiful forests, universal education, abolishment of poverty, reforestation, and access to clean energy alternatives are necessary. You really start to develop an eye for finding sleeping chameleons. They're quite abundant in these forests. This little sleeping chameleon is a brown leaf or stump-tailed chameleon, the Brochisia superciliaris. Once again, we are able to see a demonstration of the chameleon's desire to sleep over top of foliage as a safety measure to avoid predation. This is an adult cicada emerging from its nymph stage. As you can see here, the wings are slowly pumping up with hemolymph, which is the insect's blood, so that they will expand out. Its body is still soft and the exoskeleton has not yet hardened, but eventually it'll be joining the chorus or choir of insects oh, you can hear out. buzzing throughout the day here in Andasibe. Overall, a very successful night walk. Time to head back to the cabins. Good morning. So this is our little cabin. And as you can hear, we have probably the coolest morning rooster you'll hear anywhere in the world. Critically endangered injury. Calling us to rise. Not even going to check things out. Those guys. I'll put it in a cup. No, there's no way, put dude. It in a cup. I'm not sleeping here. Those guys. They had the nerve. <laughs> it's a good morning, folks. It's a good morning. It's a great morning. <laughs> Tears of joy. Time. Tears of joy. <laughs> Watch Adam roasting his friends. <laughs> it's my favorite thing on earth to do. Watch out, you can turn on your nose for a second. <laughs> Don't say friends. <laughs> After a hearty breakfast consisting of fresh fruits, eggs, and bread, it was time to pack our belongings for the day, assemble the team, and head to our bus. Good morning, Mikey. Where are we going, buddy? 
fishing for mantella. Fishing? Yep. What kind of lure do you use for that? Uh, fruit fly. A, a fruit fly? fly fishing. Oh, I thought you just used some lemon zest or like citrus zest. Oh? No? I don't get it. They're orange. Oh. No, that's messed up. You're grading their brothers and sisters. Oh my god, they're cannibals. <laughs> to the vehicle we go. And the other one is uh, waiting for the, the comedian spot there. Hola, buenos dias. Oops, wrong language. What's up, boys? Dude, where did where'd Adam go? Okay, Adam, let, let's Adam. go this way. Thank you, yes. <laughs> Special service? Yes. Special treatment? Yes, this is what happens when you have 150,000 subscribers on YouTube. Shame. For shame. <laughs> keep walking, keep Maybe walking. Well, what do you got? Like 180? <laughs> Get under this umbrella. Has to keep his hair from getting frizzy. <laughs> <laughs> I see a pattern. This is Natty necessary, but this is nice. You know? <laughs> Natty Mas for a hat. Dave needs an umbrella. I see a long haired pattern here. Oops. Oi! I just got him eating a bug. Do you know how many people it takes to bring a chameleon down from a tree? Well, have a look for yourself. My 10 minutes is here. This guy's a smart guy. Let me tell you, wrangling a Parsons chameleon down from a tree is not an easy task. Just when you think you have them because all four limbs are on your branch, you remember that they have that long prehensile tail, and it's keeping them attached to the tree. A little, yeah, keep going. We got him. And... Pull in the reel, pull in the reel! No! Oh no, oh no, oh no! No! That's a loop pull! Although this method is certainly time consuming, it's the least stressful for the animal, as it feels as though it's just climbing onto another branch. It's coming. Might even. It's like opening a jar. I know, I mean, right? I loosened him. You loosened him? <laughs> Alright, buddy. Oh, yes. yes. Again, that long prehensile tail keeps the chameleon attached to the tree. It's not as easy as it might look, and he can get himself all the way back up there just from the tail if we're not careful. Hey! Oh my god! <gasps> Alright everybody, look at here. We have a massive orange-eyed male Parsons chameleon. This is the Kaluma Parsonia Parsonia orange eye. Now, he is sort of giving us those stress colors because we did sort of wrangle him out of the tree briefly to have a moment to show you how impressive this animal is. But normally, he'll sort of be more of a lightish, bluey green tinge, sort of similar to what you can see there on the cast. Wow, this guy has intense grip. I'm reminded constantly as we're here in Andesibe how much it rains and how important hydration is for these animals. They're a deep forest chameleon and they're constantly drinking off the leaves. They're constantly getting those showers and it really emphasizes we need to make sure that when we're keeping these animals that they get lots and lots of water. But look at this guy. As I've been saying throughout the trip as a joke, they're tree triceratops. He has those massive rostral processes on his face there. He's handsome, he's got the coloration. Look at that prehensile tail. It's like a fifth limb. He can wrap it around branches. He could hang from it if he needed to. He actually grabbed it and used it as a vine to evade us bringing him out of the tree. 
These are impressive animals evolved for living high up in the tree canopies. And I've been told that our guides actually found a female. So once again, we're gonna be fortunate enough to see both male and female representation of the species. What an honor to be here in Madagascar. What an honor to be able to see this beautiful animal. I'm just blown away by the animals we're seeing. I'm so appreciative of the tour. Patrick, he's showing us such amazing animals and our guides who have taken us along to show the local species we've come across. It's a dream come true to be here. And I'm just so pleased with what we're doing. It's, it's almost overwhelming. When I think back, the days are a blur. This is amazing. All right, everyone. So we just saw the stunning male orange-eyed Parsons. Now have a look at this female. Isn't she gorgeous? The deep greens, the orange eyes are more prominent because she's looking a little bit less stressed than he was. There's a big audience looking at that guy and it's a little too much. But look at her. Isn't she incredible? Right off the bat, you can see that she doesn't have the rostral processes the way he does as a male and she's a bit smaller. I think this female will definitely still grow a bit larger, but not by a whole lot. They're not as big of a locality as the yellow lips that we saw earlier on the trip. Wow, look how impressive this chameleon is. Just an incredible animal altogether. And I can't stress enough, the grip on Parsons is something else. Any of those little cuts you see on my hands, it's pretty much just from those and an Ustaleti. The other chameleons aren't too bad, but these guys, you'll feel it. Let's say you wanna put some hand sanitizer on your hands after, you're, you're gonna feel it if you've been holding a Parsons. It stings, because they just get in there and they're not letting go. Take a look at this juvenile Parsons chameleon we found. I'm always in awe when I watch chameleons navigate through foliage. They're truly perfectly designed for this ability and there's no stopping them from getting to wherever they want to be in a tree. Mikey has found shelter under the tree. I didn't bring my rain jacket. The one time. The one time I need it. Hi right, guys, how are we doing? Nadim? Doing great. I see you're protecting the camera equipment. Yeah, she's honestly glitching a bit from the rain, so. Actually? Yep. Oh, so we must Dude. be careful. So yeah, it's going great. Okay, okay, very good. Horizontal or vertical? Vertical. Fabien, comment vas-tu? Tu restes sec. Tu es staying dry. Ah oui. Même avec le parapluie. Merci beaucoup. Même avec le parapluie. There's a lot of mud. Makes it more adventurous. Finding the locality of Parsons chameleons native to Andasibe was quite something. But now it's time to move on to another location to find some very special animals. Holy rock. Wow. Let me get in there. I'm sure it's kept the, the long lens on here. Ooh, look at that phone. Have a look here guys, this animal has got to be the king of Rossville processes. This is the Fursifer bifidus. This guy's like a rhinoceros. I'm really loving these Fursifer species that have the sort of more Kaluma appearance. I mean, this guy is not quite that, but the fact that they have these large rostral processes always reminds me of the Kaluma parsonii. What a cool animal. He was a little bit feisty before when we first pulled him out of the tree, understandably as well, but he's sort of calmed down a lot now. We're gonna hopefully get some nice shots of him with calmer coloration when those chromatophores stop folding and makes him look real angry. But wow, look at him. I'm sure he's getting lots of attention from the ladies with that face and those processes. We have seen so many species of chameleon so far on this trip. And Andesibe is providing no shortage of opportunity to see incredible animals. Wow. By now you've probably noticed that this chameleon is suffering from a pretty severe tail injury. That being said, it's the perfect example of how resilient wildlife can be at carrying on. Despite the fact he can't use his tail very well, or even at all, this lizard seems to be getting by just fine. I've just received news from our group members that are further up ahead on the path here that we have another really cool but small species we're going to get to see soon. 
And let me tell you, you think this nose is big? Wait till you see that, guys. Except it's in a small package. Check this out everybody. This is a Kaluma phallax. This is another tiny little species of Kaluma chameleon. And look at that little rostral process. This animal is gorgeous. It has these deep blue hues, these bandings. It has that lateral stripe along the body. What a gorgeous chameleon species that we've come across here. I'm not mistaken, the taxonomical revision of this animal may have recently happened and it might be a different species name, but as far as I know at this point it's called Kaluma phallax. We'll let him be on his way and carry on and see what we can find next. Okay everyone, we thought we saw the largest rostral process on an animal, proportionately speaking. Now this chameleon is tiny. But have a look at how large the rostral process is on his face. This is the Kaluma gallus, otherwise commonly known as the Pinocchio chameleon. And I mean, it's pretty easy to tell why. Look at the rostral process on this animal. It is absolutely beautiful. Right off the bat, I can see there are three hues of coloration. We go from green closest to the face, a little bit of blue scalation, and the very tip is actually red. He's so tiny. Unbelievable how much diversity and size we're finding within this genus. We have the enormous, world's largest Kaluma parsonii, and then we have this tiny little guy here with his enormous rostral process. Have a look here, everyone. You can see this female is actually drinking droplets of water off of this leaf. You can see right off the bat the sexual dimorphism and dichromatism between these animals. Look at her little red nose there, it's rounded. Funny enough, I think this is the first species we've seen where the female actually has almost a rostral process or at least a little nub on the end of her nose too. But again, we're so blessed to have male and female representation of each species we've come across. So unique, these guys are beautiful. The diversity of chameleons on this island is extraordinary and something to behold. Look at there, that guy is trying to catch this uh, Oh! I'm not gonna lie, as incredible as this was to see, I was worried about this gentleman. Barefoot, no safety, that's really high up. He's got him, look at that. <laughs> That is just incredible. <laughs> Big male. He's got him. All right, he's gonna bring him down and we'll take a look at him. Okay guys, we stay for more than two hours here. All right friends, we're here with Patrice and he is our guy that showed us this animal and we've come to realize something. Um, perhaps, Bill, you want to take it away? Oh, okay. Uh, this locale here is what we in the hobby call a yellow giant. Even though it has orange eyes and somebody say, oh, that's an orange eye. Uh, in the hobby, we decide these names go with these locales. It's somewhat arbitrary. And of course, there's all sorts of discussion as to what exactly we should call them. But we have to call them something. In this case, this is a yellow giant, uh, even though it has uh, orange eyes. Now, the orange eye Parsons chameleon uh, is generally accepted as the one with the blue body. Now, when you get into the uh, people who are dedicated to Parsons chameleons, there's a lot of uh, debate as to what we should call them. And this is a good discussion for us to have. We do need to refer to them as something. Uh, and we debate as to whether we should call them something that is uh, descriptive of their color, or perhaps we should call them something that is descriptive of their locale that has actual uh, a serious value to it uh, and this is just something that we talk about 
and we discuss and uh, we will continue to discuss. Ultimately, the ones we've seen today, we've unfortunately misidentified as the hobby named Orange Eyes. What we're actually seeing are the Yellow Giants. We've talked a lot about the importance of creating temperature gradients for our pet chameleons. Now, of course, you probably can't provide an enclosure this large for your animal, but it just shows you how a chameleon is able to utilize its environment to access food, water, move into warmer or cooler temperatures, and even find higher or lower humidity. So, Alec, where are we headed now? We're gonna see some frogs. What kind of frogs? Golden mantella. How excited are you to see it? Yeah? I'm excited too. It's gonna to be very special. But first. Pardon? But first, we stop for a local lunch. Are we actually? No. Okay. Good. Good. I think we should just go straight to the frogs. What circuit are we doing? I don't know, but we're going to look for some mantela orantica. Mantela orantica, estamos listos. Hi, buddy. Teeming with life. He's sleeping. Everywhere. That's really cool. Uh, the entire gang walked right by him, and I was a little fond of him. Ah. <laughs> Sanzinia Madagascariensis. Beautiful. <laughs> that was like the number one species that I wanted to find here. What's wrong? <laughs> Alec? How are we doing here, man? Pretty good. Good gloves. Yes, yeah, so I'll put mine on shortly as In well. In my boots. Very good. Yes, I see the boots. i find some frogs. Adam? I think we're gonna find some frogs. Also, with my gloves on. Patrice? Yeah. Est-ce qu'on va trouver des grenouilles? <laughs> <laughs> for the golden matter as the guests the would like to, to see it so we just realize their dream now come at this first thank you so much you're welcome my friend says my name is justin uh, i'm the the first uh project supervisor who is in charge of the captive breeding here uh, first we have this small captive breeding in here the question is why we keep frogging to captivity uh, because all the amphibians in the world, they are threatened by habitat destruction. And of course, the climate change. And the biggest threat is the uh, disease, which was discovered in South Africa many years ago, which called the chytrid fungus. Is that here? Uh, it's not yet uh, detected to the islands, but every year we are trying to, to do uh, disease screening uh, in a different site in Madagascar. But until now, we do not have this chytrid fungus yet in here. So we have to be ready, we have to prepare before the chytrid arrive to the islands. So that's the reason why we established the first captive breeding here in Madagascar. We have started this project since 2010. So we run two big activities. So the first one is the husbandry research because many species never been kept into captivity. In the world, we have about 5,800 species of frogs. And here in Madagascar, we have more than 400 different species. And in this region, we have 160 different species of frogs, including three of them are critically endangered. We have some of the species inside here. And in the big lab, we have about 13 different species of frogs. And we are trying to study about their behaviors and also their uh, breeding. The big captive breeding program is not allowed for everyone to go inside because we run the first biosecure activity. Yeah, so that is why we establish this one here for everyone. But everything you see in here is the same as we do in the uh, captive breeding. Yeah, so we're trying to simulate their natural habitat by using some leaf plants 
and also many other substrate. And then we do also insurance population because as I told you, we have this species which is critically endangered. We are trying to raise them into captivity and then release them back into nature. So we have done the first release in 2017 and we have released 1,700 individuals in the world. Wow. And the second one was in 2020. We did not achieve the goal because of the uh, COVID problems. So we did only 350. And the last one was just last year. Uh, we have done 1,800 individuals back to the world. But the problem is uh, people uh, destroying their natural habitat by doing rice field. So the last time I went there, it was in 2016. So the range is not as big as, as we think. It is only like 20 hectares. And I have checked this in 2016. I spent like four hours in the field, but I never heard any frog calling. And also, I never see any frog. I'm so appreciative of Justin's time and the tour he offered us. It's inspiring to see the hard work and dedication of this association bearing fruits of labor in being able to reproduce and release so many critically endangered amphibians back into the wild. Justin also shared that they are looking to start breeding programs focusing on reproducing the Europlatus leaf-tailed gecko genus soon as well. If you would like to learn more about their work, a link is provided in the video description. I wonder what it looks like here in the dry season. Well then. Actually, then see if I can come out this, uh, this summer. Possible as well. Mm -hmm. As the uh, latitude we'll increased, was because of. Okay. So. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh we lost the hair. Thank you. And lost our hair. All right. Appreciate. Oh man, that's warm. La Terrasse Marie Lodge. The, the building with the corrugated metal? And that's where we're going to be. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, Petit Mikey's not playing games. Your, uh, knee -high rubber boots. All right, what's the plan here? Are we going in or what? How much to go in there? What do we got here? If there's one place to go for pizza, it's Madagascar. <laughs> and that's why I've traveled 20 some hours, <laughs> well, 40 hours, mm -hmm. to sit at this table and have a pizza. And he's gonna, he's gonna eat dinner in two, uh, two and a half hours again, right? Thin crust? Two hours at this point. <laughs> mm-hmm. Stringy cheese. What are we saying here? Savage. Alec, what are we thinking about the I saw one episode. Oh, like them a lot. No, one clip. Mike? Like, people just keep like yeah. commenting right. as they're walking Simple, by. Simple, easy, mm -hmm. delicious. delicious. Famous Just another critter finding its way into the room. An adult male twig mantis. Okay, let's get this guy outside. I'm safe. He does not belong in our room. You free, little buddy. Come on. Take flight. Bye.
Well friends, just like that, our last evening for our set program in Andasibe was coming to an end. We enjoyed the rest of our night, hung out, had some good laughs, shared stories of what we saw and did, and prepared to embark on our next adventure the following morning. But by now you know how this works. That's a part of our journey you're gonna have to wait to see next time. <laughs>